द मेकिंग ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नाउ इन दिस लेसन वी विल डील विथ फोर टू फाइव थिंग्स लाइक डिमांड फॉर कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली कमिटीज ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली वी विल ऑल्सो डील विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव रेजोल्यूशन एंड वॉट इट वॉज ऑल्सो वी विल टेक अ लुक इन टू द टाइम लाइन ऑफ द मेकिंग ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वी विल ऑल्सो लर्न अबाउट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कमिटी इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली दैट इज द ड्राफ्टिंग कमिटी देन वी विल लुक इन टू सम इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्ट्स फॉर प्रिलिम्स एंड अदरवाइज एंड फाइनली we will look into the criticism of the constituent assembly now before going ahead let me tell you the indian constitution is the written constitution unlike the constitution of england which is unwritten unwritten constitution evolves over a long period of time and there is no specific body constituted for that purpose whereas in case of written constitution there is specific body constituted for the purpose of making the constitution written constitution is codified and compiled in structured manner now let us discuss demand for constituent assembly now as early as in 1922 the mahatma gandhi put forward the idea that india's political destiny should be determined by the indian themselves and not by any other foreign body in 1934 mn roy the hardcore communist put forward the idea of constituent assembly official demand for constituent assembly was put forward by indian national congress in 1935 in 1938 jawaharlal nehru declared that constitution of free india must be framed without outside interference by constituent assembly elected on the basis of universal adult franchise in 1940 in the august offer the british government accepted the demand of the constituent assembly in principle now this generous act by the british government was only a carrot because they wanted indian help in the world war 2 and they wanted to pacify the congress leaders now in 1942 Sir Stafford Cripps came to India with a proposal of framing an independent constitution but this proposal was rejected by the Muslim League on the basis of two nation theory as they wanted two separate constituent assembly one for India and other for Pakistan so in short the Cripps mission failed again in 1946 the cabinet mission came and it rejected idea of two constituent assemblies but put forward the idea or a scheme for the constituent assembly which more or less satisfied the muslim league and on the basis of cabinet mission constituent assembly was constituted in november 1946 now let us discuss the composition of the constituent assembly now the total strength of the constituent assembly was 389 and this constituent assembly was partly elected and partly nominated body at that time there were two kinds of states the first were british indian provinces governed by british officials and the others were princely states the 93 members were nominated by the heads of the princely states and other 296 were from the governor provinces and from chief commissioner provinces seat allocation was in the proportion to the population where one seat approximately represented 10 lakhs of people that is 1 million people the british provinces were divided among three principal communities that is muslims sikhs and general now the rest of the population beside muslims and sikhs were general representatives of each community elected by the members of that community only now what does this means that means in muslim constituency the representative will be a muslim and only muslim members from that community or constituency can vote in the election now the method of election was proportional representation by means of single transferable vote now elected members from these elections will go forward and sit in the constituent assembly they will take part in the discussions and deliberations and they will ultimately form the constitution of india now the constituent assembly was divided into committees these committees submitted their report on which discussions and deliberations took place in constituent assembly 
There were committees like Union Powers Committee headed by Jawaharlal Nehru, Union Constitution Committee headed by Jawaharlal Nehru again, Provincial Constitution Committee headed by Sardar Patel, Drafting Committee, one of the most important committee of the Constituent Assembly headed by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Advisory Committee on Fundamental Rights, Minorities, Tribal and Excluded Areas headed by Sardar Patel. This committee had five subcommittees like Fundamental Rights Subcommittee, Minorities Subcommittee, Northeast Tribal Areas and Other Excluded Areas Subcommittee and Northwest Frontier Tribal Areas Subcommittee. Also there was Rules of Procedure Committee headed by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, States Committee for Negotiating with States headed by J.L. Nehru and Steering Committee headed by Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Now as said earlier, all these committees submitted their reports which were discussed in Constituent Assembly. Now the constitution is supreme fundamental sacred law of the nation. It reflects the nation's ethos, vision of its leaders, the leaders who participated in the Indian national movement. The philosophy underlying the Indian constitution was embodied in the objectives resolution. Now the objectives resolution was moved by Jawaharlal Nehru on 13 December 1946. It was adopted on January 2020, 1947. Now let us discuss some features mentioned in Objectives Resolution. Now this Objectives Resolution acted as a guideline for the members of the Constituent Assembly. It indicated that we should make a constitution which will ensure economic stability, political security and foster unity of the nation. We have to write the constitution which is written in nature and it will proclaim India as a sovereign, democratic, republic nation. We have to write a constitution which will ensure federal form of government with the distribution of powers between the central and the states. It will guarantee and secure justice, equality, freedom, belief, faith, worship and vocation to citizens of India. It will safeguard minorities, backward and tribal areas, depressed class and other backward classes. It will maintain territorial integrity and sovereignty over land, sea and air. We have to write the constitution which will help India to attain rightful and honored place in the world, which will promote world peace and welfare of mankind. Now unlike other lessons, this lesson is full of facts. So this is just heads up. Now let us move to the timeline of the making of the constitution. On December 9, 1946, the first meeting of constituent assembly took place. It was boycotted by Muslim League and Dr. Sachidanand Sinha was temporary president, being the oldest member of the Constituent Assembly. Later, Dr. Rajendra Prasad was appointed as the president and H.C. Mukherjee and Krishnamachari were appointed as vice president. On December 13, 1946, Jawaharlal Nehruji moved the objectives resolution. This resolution was adopted on January 22, 1947. On July 22, 1947, Constituent Assembly adopted the national flag. On November 4, 1948, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar introduced the final draft of the Constitution. In May 1949, Constituent Assembly ratified India's membership of the Commonwealth. On November 26, 1949, Constituent Assembly adopted the Constitution. On January 24, 1950, Constituent Assembly adopted the national song and national anthem and two days later, on January 26, 1950, Constitution as whole came into the force. You have to remember this, at first Constituent Assembly was not a sovereign body as it was created by Cabinet Mission Plan. This means it was creation of British Parliament. Later, Independence Act brought some changes now we will discuss what were those changes. The first constituent assembly became a sovereign body and it can even change laws made by the British Parliament. Also constituent assembly became legislative body and it performed two functions. On given day it acted as a constitution making body and on another day it acted as a parliament as a legislative body. Muslim League members hailing from the areas included in the Pakistan withdrew from the Constituent Assembly. After the Independence Act, the Pakistan Dominion came into being and the Muslim League members withdrew from the Constituent Assembly. Now let us discuss about the Drafting Committee. 
it was one of the most important committee of the constituent assembly it was formed on august 29 1947 the chairman of the drafting committee was dr b r ambedkar committee had notable jurist as its members like munshi ayangar ayer sadatullah etc drafting committee produced first draft in february 1948 after that it was thrown open to debate and then second draft was produced in november 1948 constituent assembly again met you have to remember that the drafting process was done in recess that is between july 1947 to september 1948 that was the recess time this was the time where constituent assembly meetings were not taking place drafting committee took less than 6 months to prepare the draft in all it sat for 141 days on 26 january 1950 the constitution of india came into effect and it is known as date of commencement some provisions came into effect on november 26 1949 and other provisions came into effect on 26 january 1950 now the 26 january 1950 was chosen as a date for the commencement because of the lahore resolution of december 1929 On this day it was proclaimed that 26 Jan will be the day when India will attain Purna Swaraj. Now let us discuss some other leisure facts. The symbol of the constituent assembly was elephant. B N Rao was constitutional advisor that is legal advisor of the constituent assembly. H V R Ayengar was secretary to the constituent assembly. S N Mukherjee was chief draftsman. The calligraphy of the constitution was made by Prem Bihari Narayan Rai Zada. The original constitution was decorated by Nandalal Bose and Bihohar Ram Manohar Sinha. They both belong to Shanti Niketan. Now the Hindi calligraphy was done by Vasant Krishnan Vaidya. Now finally let us discuss the criticism faced by the constituent assembly. Now constitution assembly was criticized on various grounds and this criticism is mentioned in your season book M Lakshmikant we will deal with those criticism in short the first criticism was it was not a representative body as it was not directly elected by universal adult franchisee that is not all the adult members of india voted for the election of the members of the constituent assembly it was not a sovereign body as we discussed earlier it was creation of british parliament it was created by the proposal of the british government that is cabinet mission plan third criticism is that it was time consuming exercise according to some criticism the constituent assembly took a long time to create the constitution of india but here american constitution only took 4 months to came into being whereas canadian constitution came into being after 2 years and 6 months of deliberations also there is criticism that it was dominated by congress granville austin the american constitutional expert remarked that the constituent assembly was one party body in an essentially one party country the assembly was the congress and the congress was india also there is criticism that there was lawyer politician domination and other sections of the society were not duly represented like businessmen teachers etc and that is the main reason for the bulkiness and complicated language of the constitution of india also there is one criticism that the constituent assembly was dominated by the hindus according to some critics the constituent assembly was a hindu dominated body lord viscount simon called it a body of hindus similarly winston churchill commented that the constituent assembly represented only one major community in india but these are baseless allegations as there were representatives from minority community as well finally remember this mahatma gandhi was not part of the constituent assembly so in this lesson we learned the making of the indian constitution how the constitution of india came into being how objectives resolution directed the constituent assembly to make the constitution of india which has become the supreme fundamental sacred law of the nation and which has directed india for last 70 years so this is all from this video i hope you like this video if you want me to continue such videos kindly let me know in the comment section below thank you